morning. Welcome to the morning session. Yeah, so we have been talking about the imagination within us, within the self. And um, we had talked about this desire, thought, expectation that is constantly going on within us. The desire is associated with the feeling and it is seen like an image within us. And desire has to do with how to be or what you want to be. Or um, it is about being, about feeling. And how to be, that process is elaborated by thought. So there may be many choices, like we were discussing yesterday. We compare these various choices, we analyze them, we select something and so on. So thought is based on that process of how to be with the comparing, with the analyzing. And then what you have to do outside with it, that is your expectation. It has to do with tasting and selecting. So you have some taste within you on the basis of which you now select something. And you will find that we are constantly doing this. In the smallest activities, we may be able to see this within ourselves. And with that, we had just very briefly opened up the higher activities. But if there are any questions or um, <laughs> any reflections on this, we can take that. We had opened up just a brief discussion on contemplating. <laughs> Contemplation has to do with seeing our relationship with others, being able to see our relatedness with others and being able to see our role in the relationship our participation in the larger order. And we had asked this question that are we able to see this? Our um, point of self-reflection yesterday was to contemplate on our relationship with all other human beings and to try to see, are you able to see your relationship with all other human beings or largely with those whose opinions, whose ideas, whose preconditionings, etc. match yours. So in your interactions with others, were you able to see this yesterday? Um, we had asked you to try to see for yourself and Regarding this, what we were discussing yesterday about seeing our relationship in yesterday's interactions with others, were we able to see whether we are seeing our relatedness with others or are we seeing the differences based on opinions, our ideas, our likes and dislikes matching or not matching? If we try to see this within ourselves, that will be very beneficial. We can all see our intention, that this is how we want to be. Now we have to see whether what we are right now, is it matching or not matching? Now, In the course of the day, you might find many instances where it is matching. You may also find many instances where it is not matching. That means your imagination a lot of times may be going in direction 
which is not in line with the natural acceptance. Are we able to see this? Good morning, ma'am. Good morning to all. Uh, ma'am, uh, whenever we make a relationship, uh, like your friends or relatives like that, uh, we are seeing that our uh, uh, like our hobbies, uh, likes and dislikes, uh, based on that, uh, we are make the relations and uh, our relationship is more intense and uh, very close if uh, we have a uh, similar hobbies and similar likes. And uh, if that hobbies and likes are different, uh, even though the relationship is there, we are not say uh, doing the opposition, but the intensity of the relationship, closeness, love and affection is less and uh, sometimes what we are uh, what i am observing uh, suppose our beliefs and our friends are uh, somebody's uh, opponent uh, beliefs are not match they are saying opposite to us i uh, mean uh, our uh, if i observe now our inner conscious uh, start to oppose that uh, relationship I thought to keep away that relationship because mm -hmm. it is not match with us. Uh, this is how we are maintaining them. Yeah. Uh, this is what is happening now. But if we try to observe within ourselves, mm -hmm. this, this, you know, what we discussed in the very beginning of the workshop mm -hmm. when we talk about self and body, this fact that mm -hmm. the feelings right mm -hmm. within us mm -hmm. this need is there you know we want to be happy we want to have mm -hmm. the feeling that is naturally acceptable that need is there mm -hmm. in me mm -hmm. that is my need need of the self regardless mm -hmm. of the relationship abhi we are not even bringing another self in the picture right mm -hmm. my need mm -hmm. to be happy has to do with feelings these feelings yeah. are qualitative. You can't mm. say I have a little bit of relationship and a little bit of opposition, isn't it? Mm. You either mm. have a feeling of relationship or you have a feeling of opposition. It may be another matter mm. that I'm not able to observe it sometimes, mm. isn't it? Mm. So yeah. ultimately, this is leading to my happiness and unhappiness. Regardless of, you know, we are not even Abhi bringing the other self into it, mm. isn't it? Mm -hmm. The moment I think of another self, mm -hmm. what is my feeling for them? Mm -hmm. If I have a feeling mm -hmm. of opposition, I am the one who's unhappy. I am not doing a favor to anybody else. Mm -hmm. It is my own state. It is deciding mm -hmm. my own unhappiness. This is why mm -hmm. we say that the self, you know, the need of the self is fulfilled from within the self mm -hmm. with right understanding and right feeling. Mm -hmm. That feeling, what you feel at that time, are you mm -hmm. comfortable? Are you uncomfortable? Mm -hmm. Now it has nothing to do right now at this moment with another self, another human being. Even mm -hmm. if that person has a different opinion, if I am able to see this as a difference in opinion, then at the base, I am able to see this also that I am, I can have a feeling of relatedness and mm. yet observe that we may have different opinions. Mm. And that's okay. Even mm. I myself don't have the same opinion all the time, isn't it? Yeah. Today I like something, tomorrow my like changes. Yeah. Isn't it? Mm. So I myself. I'm not able to maintain that continuously, then why mm. do I have to have feeling of opposition for somebody else mm. who has what a difference is. in opinion? Yeah. Isn't it? Yes. Okay, we'll go a little further. Um, so, when we contemplate, you know, as we keep seeing this, we may not be able to you know, have any access to the B1 block right now, this purple block that you see on the screen, or we may not be able to see anything in that right now. That is okay. We all start from 
the B2 block. But even if we can see that, that glimpse of the natural acceptance, that is, you know, your part of the B1 block, the highest activity within us, what we call the pure observer. From that point, even though we may not be able to see right now, a glimpse of that is available to us in the form of the natural acceptance. So this question that was being asked, what to do when we have this disturbance within and we can see that we don't want it, what to do? So ultimately, if we keep referring to the natural acceptance, we'll be able to see that our feelings are not something that it is not possible to not have a feeling. You either have a feeling that is naturally acceptable or you have a feeling that is not naturally acceptable. It's not something quantitative. It is something qualitative. It's either there or it's not there. Meaning, if, if one is not there, it is the other, isn't it? There's no in-between. So when we avoid, when we ignore, we can ask ourselves, is it naturally acceptable to us or not? Right now, we equate that natural acceptance to our acceptance, which is very different. We have accepted something. We have, we believe something. But is it naturally acceptable to us? Do we want to be that way? And if we are asking that question, then certainly there is some doubt, some disturbance, something that seems a little bit unresolved. That's why we are asking the question. Once we have that feeling, then there is no doubt. Once we have a feeling that is naturally acceptable, then there is no doubt in me. Then there is, you know, I know from my side that this is something that is right for me. And I feel comfortable within, with that. So contemplation, as we keep doing this, we are able to open up or access this activity of contemplation within ourselves. And there we are able to, once we start doing that, we are able to see our relationship with every other human being. And we are also able to see our role in the relationship. It's not that you know, everything else, every other human being becomes like me. No, no. I am able to see my relationship with the other and I am able to see my role, my participation in that relationship. And then this circle becomes wider and wider. So it may start with myself having the feeling of relationship. Then it may go further to sharing this feeling with others within the immediate family, trying to help them, trying to participate in helping them have the right feeling so that they can be happy, not for my gain. Once I have the feeling of relationship, then I'm not doing anything outside to get more of it because it's already there, it's full. It's qualitative. It's not something that is half full or something that I have to fill more. It's already there. It's full. It's overflowing. Now, as a natural consequence, I want to share it with others. So I see my participation in helping the other person also have the right feeling, not for me, not for gaining anything for myself, but just out of concern so that I can help them also be happy, see, for them. So that opens up the contemplation part. And as we keep exploring further, we, you know, this activity of understanding also opens up within us and we are able to see the harmony. We are able to see the harmony in ourselves. We already saw it with the help of the right feeling when we were contemplating on the relationship and we were able to see the 
our role, our participation. But as we keep exploring, we are also able to understand the harmony that is there in every unit in this existence. So we'll be able to see that, you know, every cell, you, you, we've studied about single cell organisms. Every cell is in harmony. If we go to, you know, groups of cells, they form bigger units. They seem to be in harmony. If you look at the body, so many cells, they are working together in harmony. One is not fighting with the other. There is some participation of these cells in the larger order. So they are forming tissues, they are forming organs. These organs are forming organ systems. All of this is there and working together in a certain harmony. I'm not doing anything much for it. In fact, most of the time I am disrupting this harmony. But I just have to understand that like this, every unit in this existence is there with a certain harmony within it. And as we keep going further in our exploration, we ultimately get to the point of realization. The point where we are able to see things exactly as they are, the way they are, not with my beliefs, not with my assumptions, but with these acceptances that are based on understanding. Now I see things as they are, so I understand. I understand that every unit is in coexistence. And the basis for all of that is the space. Now I have developed the competence to be able to see that subtlest activity of space. So even though right now I may not be able to see many of these things, but a glimpse of that is there in the form of the natural acceptance. So we can keep referring to that and slowly these activities start opening within us. Why do I need to do this? Ultimately, this is what is the work to do because ultimately this is what we want, isn't it? We want that happiness also. We want it in continuity also. And we can see that we are trying so many different ways, but we are not able to get there. Because from time to time, in bits and pieces, we seem to have this happiness, but then it's gone. It's like a mirage, no? You think this will give you happiness, but when you get there, you find, oh, this is not really what I thought it would be. And now you start looking for something else that will make you happy. And we keep going from one point to another, to another, to another, in that search for that continuity of happiness. And when we get there, we find, no, no, not as nice as we thought. Something more is needed. And so on. So to be able to have that clarity that what is needed is within me. It's not out there. I'm looking in the wrong place. I'll never be able to find it there. It is within me. There is a very simple book called The Alchemist. Paulo Coelho was the author. It's a very simple, small book about a person who is going hunting or looking for a treasure. And if you know, any of you have read it, you will find it's uh, very simply written. But it has a deeper meaning to it, or at least one can see the meaning or a deeper meaning within it. But we have to try to see all these realities within ourselves. We have to see these activities within ourselves. So it starts with looking at the activities within the B2 block, seeing our thoughts, trying to see our feeling. And it will happen. As we keep paying attention, we just have to pay attention. Yeah. So ultimately, our goal 
is to get to this point of realization within. Once we are able to have this realization within, with that now it all seems to fall in place. Right? Now I have that determination that I will have, you know, with that what I can do what is my role that becomes clearer and clearer now that I have been able to see this relatedness, I have been able to see the space and all of that. I can see my relationship with every other unit. I can see the harmony in every unit and I can see my role to live in coexistence with every other unit. Then all my lower activities my desire, my thought, my expectation. I am able to bring them in line with this because now I can see this is the way. This is what it is. This is how things are. I just have to be with it. And with that, outside, the expression outside is in the form of my participation with other human beings my participation with the rest of nature, isn't it? Being able to see my role in the larger order so that ultimately we can have this undivided human society and a universal human order. That would be the ultimate expression outside. So we may be doing small things and right now it may seem like, you know, these are all very big words. And here I'm fighting with my imagination. But we don't need to fight with anything. We'll find that we can do it in a very natural, simple, easy way. Where you don't have to feel overwhelmed or disturbed or, you know, find it difficult. But we can slowly keep moving in that direction. We may have been doing many things outside which were now when we refer to our natural acceptance, we may be able to see that this was not right for me, but I was doing all this. But that's okay. That time my understanding was limited. Now if I'm able to understand things better, then let me move forward. Whatever has happened has happened. At that time, for that time, it was okay. Now that I can see something different is better for me, then I can move on that path. Just now we were uh, realizing that you know, we have to have a relationship with everyone in the world. But uh, there is one relationship uh, which is very close to me actually. Um, but the thing is that that person, I can say she's my sister, but she's very rigid, very rigid in the sense, you know, little bit also not uh, flexible. So uh, whenever you talk to her, you will get either a shouting or you will get a misunderstanding. So whatever you do for with a good purpose, there will be a misunderstanding and you will get scolding for at least 10 to 15 minutes. You pick up the call and it is a shout. So since many years, what I have been uh, doing is when I listen to that immediately, I understand, oh, this is her nature. Actually, she's a very good person. She, her nature is that she gets angry very fast. So I just listen to her and then, yeah, okay, it's okay. I, I, I meant like this. So even though she misunderstands me, I cover it, slowly make it understand. And then I will send her a you know, loving emoji or something and then cool the situation. So the thing is that never there is a proper communication because what I want to say, she never understands. It is just like how she wants it to be understood. It is that much only she will understand. So I, I understood that is her capability, that is her capacity. So I, I was ready to accept her like that. Uh, even but what is happening you now that fulfillness of the relationship is not there that transaction is not happening actually there so like you know whatever you do that other person is not able to understand you like that there is just a fake kind of relationship which just for the sake of continuing i'm just continuing because i like her and she is my sister and i have to i don't want to lose her i'm just um, making the situation soft and it is continuing 
but uh, the situation has crossed to such a limit that you say something with a very good purpose or something different she understands it in a different way and she starts uh, starts scolding and goes out of all the groups so i i thought that it is with me when i talked with my other relatives or other people they all were telling that this is her problem she will not have a relationship with anybody knowing that still i tried to continue with her a lot of time but now when i do that it causes you know a trouble in my mind it, i get irritated yeah but at the same time i know if my natural acceptance is having a relationship with her that is what i was trying all these days but now it is going to some level now is it compulsory that we have to have a relationship or we have to take the times you know this thing that okay when it will be okay let it be okay by itself <laughs> yeah so see the relationship is there is it compulsory mm. for us to have no no not compulsory we have a choice but mm. we are able to see this no that there yeah. is some disturbance because of this mm. is it so mm. one is that we are trying to accept the way she is and that also we are not able to do properly yes mm. so we are having this disturbance mm. the other is as my competence grows i will mm. be able to see that these outbursts mm. are because she is disturbed yes yes she i understood all those yeah so what will i do will i break that connection or will i try to help if i can't help i will try to find somebody who can help but i will but have she's concern, not ready no? to take anybody help because she feels she doesn't have any problem if i tell her anything she will be like what do you think what is my problem you all have problem like that it will be started so whichever way because already i am a psychologist and after this uhv classes i feel more empowered and that i am capable of you know handling things my many relationships have um, are i am able to deal well after uhv but this only one relationship i am not able to handle i see we have to see that uh, the person also may have very deep rooted sanskars mm. so for them to come out of that may not be so simple okay what you are able to see she is not able to see at this time mm. that's how but it if is. i continue with her then i am getting very irritated it is a dis- ah, it is so the, my the whole day is not so much with her the problem is more with me i have to improve my competence no No, if I don't talk with her, then there is no problem, na. Like I am not is getting disturbed. There is no problem. No, is there, there is no a basic problem. There is a basic problem, but I, momentarily I am not getting disturbed. But if I talk, if I say, uh, if I don't say the good morning, then immediately today no good morning. You forgot. I am sitting far away. Nobody thinks about me. I mean, in this whole the whole thing, we may, then I have to say sorry, sister. I just forgot. I was See, so what busy. What you are doing is what you are doing is you are seeing from your perspective, है ना? Okay, look at her. i uh, all day are we supposed to do this for her can't she see that you know that we don't have to keep expressing this but if you see from her perspective she may already have this sanskar that nobody cares about me yes nobody actually, bothers about mm, me i don't yeah, feel that, good about myself yes so that, that is, is why i was friend. trying her to you know feel better and you know not feel lonely and all i understand it is because wait, wait, the situations wait wait. wait wait what we are doing is we are doing some patchwork isn't mm. it Hmm. Ultimately, she has some very deep-rooted sanskar. Based on <coughs> that, she is expressing something. Hmm. Now we are trying to patch it up. Okay, hmm. okay, I will give in so that she is not disturbed right now. Hmm. But that sanskar is sitting there. No, it will keep popping up every time. Hmm. Hmm. And we are getting now disturbed. Hmm. Actually, <laughs> so now is it? what would be the right thing to do to just avoid that or to you know ignore it and just try to patch it or try to work on my own competence so that i first of all don't get disturbed because when i get disturbed i can't take the right decision about her also isn't it mm-hmm. i can so what am i supposed to do that's what we'll first work on ourselves mm. when we do the exercises see first of all i need to be calm within otherwise how can i take the right decision outside isn't it with the other also how will i take the right decision unless i am i have no problem with anybody else anybody else correct hai but you have a problem here na so uh-huh. still it is your problem you are the one who is feeling it na hmm 
So you are the okay. one who is having the disturbance. So it is your problem right now. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. So how to solve that? When we do the exercises, we'll discuss in detail. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah.